I know that we are uh, short on time, Ambassador, so I'm going to quickly introduce you and then I'm going to hand over the stage over to you. So uh, before I uh, introduce uh, the Ambassador, I first have to say that uh, at GPods and personally for myself, I have a special relationship with Costa Rica. My uh, roommate, my flatmate at Cornell was from Costa Rica and I got to meet a lot of people from that country, haven't been able to visit yet. Uh, and then even at GPods, our fellowship, uh, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Carlos Man Manuel Rodriguez, who is, uh, uh, who is a uh, mentor at the fellowship and he has been the Minister of uh, Environment uh, in Costa Rica and has held many other positions. And now uh, absolutely privileged to have His Excellency Mr. Carrazo, who's the permanent representative of Costa Rica to the United Nations. Uh, he has uh, a wide ranging experience in politics, international relations, business and law. Uh, he has also been the president of uh, Walta Assessoris uh, SA and has worked, uh, you know, uh, in many positions, including uh, being the deputy of the Legislative Assembly of Costa Rica from 2002 to 2006, and the first ombudsman of Costa Rica, uh, a position he held from 1993 to 97. Uh, Ambassador Carazo, uh, absolutely a pleasure to host you over here. And we are looking forward to hearing from you uh, about some of the great uh, you know, achievements uh, of your country. My personal favorite is, uh, you know, uh, Costa Rica becoming net positive. Uh, and uh, we'd love to hear that. And hopefully in these uh, next 25 to 30 minutes, we'll also be able to sneak in some questions from the audience. So over to you, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I always enjoy these uh, conversations and perhaps after a, a, an introduction, and we will have some time for questions and answers in the next 25 minutes, and I appreciate that. Well, uh, and I, I hope to transfer, translate my, my, my passion, my interest on all these subjects and uh, the, the way, the positive way in which I, I perceive uh, your interest and your sharing there is interest on, on, on these uh, subjects. Uh, on your introduction, you mentioned something that is very dear to me, which was the position of the uh, ombudsman of my country that I uh, occupied from 1992 to 1996, if I recall uh, correctly. Uh, in, in my country, ombudsman is not uh, known like that, but rather as mm -hmm. the defender of the people. The defender of the human rights of the people, the defender of the rights of the people, the defender of the interests of the people, or the one that responds uh, to the needs of the poor people, calling on the government uh, on the, its obligation to feel, fulfill those needs and aspirations of the people. I was the first one to occupy that, that seat. And I understood it uh, plenty, in pl plentiful. Uh, I understood that it was my task and, and uh, it led me to, yes, find the needs and transfer those needs to those in, in charge of fulfilling them those mm -hmm. in the government and upon the, the, the writings of the laws or the basic principles, I was able to bang on some tables or persuade uh, some people in order that uh, the needs and the rights of the people be heeded by the government. It was, it was a, a great uh, occupation that I had for, for, for four years and that I still to uh, this day I, I cherish uh, very much and has well has uh, informed my actions as ambassador of Costa Rica during uh, this period a period in which uh, we have had uh, many many tasks and many matters that uh, we have uh, uh, work on to 
what is not a climate change. The climate has already changed. It's now a climate catastrophe to uh, the need to, to decarbonize, to put in the, the process of decarbonization of Costa Rica as an example of the need, not an example of the things that are done, but uh, as an example of the things that need to be done in order to accomplish that through the next uh, 30 years uh, now. Mm -hmm. So those are issues that have kept uh, my attention together with rights of children, rights of women, in which we have uh, uh, been very, very active, the uh, rights of uh, nature, with the uh, disarmament uh, on the other hand, the international agreements to uh, to assure that there is enough finan finance for development. There is not enough finance for development. We have to strive hard, harder, and uh, it's hard for some people to understand that uh, the world needs to be homogeneous, that the world needs uh, to, I mean, that everyone is entitled to the uh, finance needed for uh, it for his or her development. So it's many, many things that we have done. I'm very glad that uh, you uh, were in contact with uh, Carlos Manuel Echeverria at uh, some moment, a good friend, uh, with whom, as a Minister of the Environment, we had we did many, many uh, things uh, during my tenure here at the Embassy. He's now in an international organization. You wanted to know about peacekeeping, particularly, Absolutely. and about the free trade, how do you call it? free trade uh, arrangements, or free trade, uh, Free, free trade okay. agreements. Uh, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, thanks uh, to Jimena, who is here uh, <laughs> with me, working in, in some other issues and uh, and helping. Uh, we all help each other here at the mission. Certainly. Uh, free, free trade ag agreements. Yes. Peacekeeping. Why don't we call it rather a peace building? Mm -hmm. Let's work on making the fundamentals for peace be present in the minds of uh, of the people. When I read uh, this week that uh, Russia, the United States, and China are competing to see that no one gets ahead of the other in whatever is uh, cyber, in whatever is space, right. uh, armament, uh, very far from me. I said, hey, listen, that is not leading to anything. Why don't you agree among, you, among the three of you, combine your efforts, combine your science, combine your resources, and uh, multiply, not by three, but by two the joint results of all those uh, good deeds in space rather than looking for something that will not be what cut or bombed or destroyed by the other party. No one wants to, to destroy anything in space. What for? I mean, why spend so much resources in order to have that instead of uh, building the uh, all those wonderful things that we have already gotten from the, the use of space, such as this communication that we are having at absolutely. This so peacekeeping, peace, uh, excuse me, peace building is uh, perhaps the first uh, fundamental to having a peace, and hopefully the first fundamental to make sure that no peacekeeping efforts would be uh, needed. Why not mm -hmm. to address the needs of people? Why not to have the people I mean, uh, working uh, together, growing together, uh, playing uh, together, uh, reading together, I mean doing 
things uh, together rather than in confrontation or in a race. Not only arms races, but all matters that lead to confrontation. Let's put cooperation before everything. And let's uh, try, therefore, to prevent uh, conflicts, mm -hmm. to educate uh, for peace. Uh, Costa Rica proposed uh, 42 years ago the creation of a university for peace, which is an international right. organization that has the headquarters in, in Costa Rica and that well, tries to fill that purpose. If you want peace, prepare for peace rather than uh, said before, if you want peace, prepare for war, dissuade, dissuade the other people in uh, arming themselves or so on, but arm yourself up uh, for peace. No, that's, that's absolutely not necessary. The resources are uh, limited always, and let's put them in the best purpose. Uh, free trade agreements, are they good? Yes, they are good if they are fair. They mm -hmm. are not good if they are lopsided. They are good if they take advantage of the benefits of each one of the partners in uh, these agreements. Uh, I had the possibility to, to uh, what, uh, learn uh, firsthand the provisions of a trade agreement that was signed and is in effect between the United States, a great regional power, of course, at that time and, and now, with the five small Central American uh, countries, a trade agreement uh, right. that uh, then grew to a sixth uh, and a seventh small country. And if the benefits of that agreement would be distributed among, other, among all peoples, including people in the United States, it would right. be for the better of everyone. But when I sensed that the interest was of the big corporations of the United States in order to uh, keep their uh, intellectual property, in order to keep the right uh, to markets, uh, rather than in order to associate for the benefit of everyone, I, I had to contend uh, forcefully with uh, those issues to not much avail. Uh, mm -hmm. Circumstances have uh, proved that, that that is necessary. Look at how many people have come uh, as forced migrants from Central America to the United States ever since. And that is not necessarily the way in which this cooperation may be had by having people in the black uh, in the black work market here in the U.S. People that have not come out into the open that would not have access to education to education of uh, the kids. So yes, uh, trade uh, free trade agreements are good if they are fair. Are good if they tend to equalization rather than to polarization. We have a, a wonderful world. Uh, why don't we strive to make it ever better? That is uh, the task and that's what I feel that uh, is the foreign policy of uh, Costa Rica and is my endeavor to uh, get it ahead. So as, as uh, fundamental perhaps uh, we can start with that and, and hear some of the comments that uh, the, the people uh, who are present, I appreciate uh, very much, 46 participants. That's, that's a treat for me uh, today. And uh, <laughs> let me, let, let, please, uh, please uh, organize uh, the questions and I'll be, I'll be very glad. Certainly, to certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador, for giving us an overview about Peacekeeping uh, versus peace building. I agree with you. Peace building is probably the paradigm that we need to first sort out before we can think about peacekeeping. Uh, let let us, uh, you know, anybody in the audience, you can raise your hands, you can unmute yourself, and then uh, you can ask your questions. Uh, I see uh, 
Jay, Crystal, uh, Saeed, Dyuti uh, from the fellowship over here. So if you want to quickly introduce yourself to the ambassador and ask a question, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Ambassador. My name is Saeed. I'm um, from Nigeria, originally from Nigeria. I'm a Wash consultant. I actually enjoyed the way you've actually interlocked peace building, peacekeeping, conflict revolution, resolution, cooperation, climate change, and as well as free trade. They were actually wonderful, very precise to the point. But from what you've said, I felt um, a little bit would like some insights concerning how environmental costs could be imbibed into every free trade agreement. Looking at your insights from the political angle, from the impact of several trade on the environment, because we people will always think of solely about ourselves and our rights, but what of the right of the environment, which is an extension of human rights. So how can free trade as a section of environmental cost covered for every trade between countries, between communities, and uh, yeah, between regions as well. Thank you. So. Thank you. Should we take a one a one by one or two or three? Or we can we can take it two at a time. So I see Eduardo. Uh, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Introduce yourself as well to the ambassador, please. Thank you, Mr. Arpit. Uh, hello, Mr. Ambassador. My name is Eduardo Guevara. Reciba, por favor, un cordial saludo desde México. Uh, I am a PhD candidate in water sciences, and I am worried because Latin America, as we all know, and as you mentioned in your remarks, is a particularly vulnerable region to climate change. And my question is, do you believe we have a good mechanism for knowledge and technology transfer between Latin American countries to boost climate action and decarbonation of our economies. Thank you in advance for your response. Uh, well, I'll take uh, these uh, two questions. I, I was not able to get the name of our first, uh, the first uh, Saeed. That, uh, Saeed. 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 Yeah. Sahit. Uh, hello, Sahit, and uh, well, thanks uh, very much uh, for, for your question. Uh, environmental principles nowadays should be the platform from which uh, from which free uh, free trade agreements built up. I mean, whatever is has been attained. In, in the leading country should be the measure for all other countries entering into those free trade agreements. Let's forget about that old custom of uh, keeping my environment, my environment clean and sending the dirty industry elsewhere. That's uh, not the way in which in, in, in which uh, free trade can be maintained by means of exporting the, 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 the hidden costs of uh, development, uh, uh, not exporting uh, those costs in order to offset them with uh, more labor, but rather have labor which is justly paid, justly uh, compensated, but also of all parties and all processes heeding the environmental norms or, or have been attained by by the leading uh, the leading partner in the trade i mean the leading partner in in the free trade in the free trade agreement in terms of environmental norms or environmental uh, principles they are fundamental this uh, a base from which we cannot uh, go back and uh, well uh, believe me said it is uh, difficult to remind parties that that will be the case very frequently there is an interest that by getting uh, together and with with the bait 
of having more jobs, uh, the, the, the principles of environmental protection are not kept in the same manner in uh, the different uh, state parties. Uh, fundamental uh, principle. And, uh, well, yes, uh, Eduardo, muchas gracias. Uh, un gran gusto. Uh, thanks uh, for participating uh, in, in the call. Uh, yes, we are in, in a region that is uh, vulnerable. Uh, again, not to climate change, but to the climate uh, catastrophe. But which region is not? I mean, uh, take uh, the tornadoes here in the weekend in, in the United States, or the droughts that happen in China, or the big issues in uh, Central Europe, or uh, in all countries in the West, in the South, in the North, and in the East, we are all vulnerable to a, to a climate that has been devastated by the damage that uh, industrialization and development has, and uncontrolled development uh, has caused. So let's uh, let, let's find the ways uh, to stop that damage coming from uh, the process of development and or industrialization. Let's uh, push all types of adaptation and mitigation that are uh, available. Let's get back to nature-based solutions. That is one of the principles, uh, principles that Costa Rica is pushing. And uh, well, let's uh, Let's address heads on the issue of decarbonization. We, we have come to a situation in which, yes, the solution is to decarbonize, to decarbonize uh, fast, uh, to decarbonize all economies, not only uh, some of uh, the economies, uh, uh, to, to uh, to do away with the fossil fuels, to do away with elements that uh, heat the environment. We have to control the increase of, uh, of uh, temperatures in uh, the world in order to make this uh, world a, a livable one for future generations. That is fundamental. And yes, of course, uh, rounding with uh, your question, Eduardo, this requests a lot of uh, technology transfer. Technology is there. Uh, but when I mentioned nature-based solutions, all right, that nature also has its uh, technology, which in some cases, uh, Mexico is no doubt one of uh, the basic, uh, of the big example, uh, which is a technology that has been with nature for millennia uh, now. Let's have all this uh, knowledge uh, transferred uh, among peoples of uh, the world and um, among countries. Let's have countries uh, decarbonized. Uh, let's have uh, processes that uh, absolutely cut the increase of uh, damage to the environment, uh, to the temperature of uh, the world, and to the the what the, the poisoning of our waters. Let's uh, let's have a high ambitions on this. Costa Rica is pushing together with uh, more than sixty countries, so that thirty percent of the land uh, territory and thirty percent of the uh, marine territory are protected by the year. Uh, by the year 2030. I was distracted by some uh, notes here in the chat, which is a very, very uh, powerful. Let me see if I can get it, but it's, uh, use, let's uh, use nature to fix nature. Yes, yes. Many of us, the answers are there, and I appreciate uh, very much the participant who wrote uh, that a minute ago. Absolutely. That was Sarah. Ambassador Sarah is one of our fellows at Depot. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. 
I'm uh -huh. learning to read here and talk there and so on. That's technology. Oh, it's, it's, it's technology a lot. It's a lot of civilians. The, the uh, technology so, Ambassador, transfer I know that, that you put into the older, older people. Thank you. <laughs> no, we are all learning from you, Ambassador. So uh, we, we have uh, one more round of questions if you have the time, but I would certainly not want to keep you uh, over the time that we've asked from you. Uh, well, I, I will have five more minutes. Uh, we, uh, okay, left. perfect, perfect. So we'll club these two questions and those would be the last. So uh, Hezbon, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, and then Jay, uh, if you could unmute yourself and ask your questions, please. Uh, thank you. I'm actually Hezbon from Kenya and maybe dealing as a human rights defender is actually concerns about the environment. And the problem that we have been having is actually the policy making that's leading to the guidance of the environment. Each and every time, maybe the government try to make the play come up with the policies, and then the policies are actually not being followed in a way that they can be able to assist maybe the community of the affected areas. For example, maybe within the region where I'm coming, only about um, the five percent is forest coverage. So you find uh, there's so much that is uh, being needed by the government to do. But they, each and every time they make policy and the, the policy is not maybe leading to the implementation to help maybe the community around. So how can we be able maybe as the community to be able to engage the government for the implementation of the policies that can be driven to help the common people around where we are? That is actually my question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Esben and Jay. Thank you, Ambassador, for uh, sharing your experience and insights. Uh, I'm a recent undergrad and uh, GBOTS fellow. My question is related to uh, when, whenever the situation arises in any of the uh, region of uh, peace building or peace resolution, the diplomats also look for the various tools how they can resolve that issue. But one uh, uh, tool which, where I really want to understand is of incentive incentives are being provided to the uh, uh, communities the ethnic groups and various uh, uh, various re in the various regions my question is how to identify that right incentive to provide to the ethnic group and how to identify that the incentive which they are providing is the long lasting or the appropriate incentive where those ethnic groups can stand by with yeah Thank you very much. Uh, when uh, back uh, 40 years ago, perhaps a bit more, Costa Rica was a country, a country whose forest had been devastated. It had, was a country with only 20% uh, forest uh, coverage. It's, all of a sudden, the government uh, became aware of the big damage, and I'm talking about the 1980s, uh, perhaps uh, end of the 19, uh, well, since early 1970s, I became aware that that could not be the case and began the process of reforestation through incentives uh, that are also mentioned. What was uh, the incentive? Well, to pay $60 per hectare to people who would protect uh, forests. And uh, now the, that coverage, which was 20%, uh, has risen to uh, nearly 60%, has uh, tripled itself in uh, 40 years uh, by means of this process of incentivization of uh, protection of the environment. Problem is that uh, by protecting forests, we accumulate the oxygen that we try to go and sell in the international markets and there we get uh, very, very low prices. But nonetheless, the, the, the process of uh, forest uh, protection, uh -huh. forest incentives keep on uh, being uh, a rule of the land addressed uh, very interestingly enough, and, and the two questions uh, are definitely linked, addressed especially to indigenous uh, populations uh, to protect the, the land of the indigenous populations, uh, which 
are somehow uh, not connected with the common economy of uh, the people. They have their forest, uh, they don't have many sources of income. So uh, the, the deal that has been uh, attained is all right, the indigenous populations, you take care of the forest, you, you get uh, money, you will get a fund in order that you can survive, that you can have access to the basic rights that uh, you have. And this has been very, very uh, attractive and very uh, positive. It gets the community involved, uh, was, has been mentioned. And, and let me say proudly that perhaps the example of Costa Rica in uh, reforestation is an example that can be uh, copied uh, or, or followed in other uh, latitudes. Uh, which, well, this is one of the incentives that has, that were asked for in the second question by ethnic group, that incentives that be long lasting. And of course, what I should say is that those incentives are precisely the ones that have been followed by these ethnic groups, by these ethnic communities for centuries or for a millennia. There, there is, I mean, we go back in circles and we'll go back to nature, we'll go back to nature-based solutions, we'll go back to protecting the land, we'll go back to protecting the ocean, we'll go back to get the communities involved in uh, this process, and, and, and perhaps in this way we can have a very positive uh, free trade among uh, nations, a uh, very positive uh, transfer of uh, technology, and peace it would be a common status rather than an interval among wars. And uh, well, those are some of my thoughts in regards to these uh, issues. Well, uh, thank you so much, Your Excellency, for uh, taking out the time and interacting with uh, our community. It is, uh, I know that we've been trying to uh, talk to you and invite you over for quite some time. I think uh, last week, first we touched base was in September last year, but eventually uh, we are glad to host you today. And uh, we hope that this is uh, the first of many interactions that we'll have.